let's get straight to the point. Today, we're going to be talking about what is GDNT. Now, if you're in the mechanical design or manufacturing world, chances are you've heard of GDNT, maybe from a classmate, a professor, a coworker, or maybe even your boss. Either way, you're wanting to know more about GDNT. Well, first things first, before we can really grasp what GDNT is, we first need to understand a few critical concepts. Now, the first concept we need to understand is this. Parts are not really useful by themselves. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, parts are useful? Of course they are. That's why we design parts. That's why we manufacture parts. What do you mean? Well, here's what I mean. Let's take this piston, for example. Let's say I take this piston by itself and just hand it to you. Is that piston by itself really useful? No, it's not. Same thing for this connecting rod and this wrist pin. It's not really useful by itself. So the next concept we need to understand then is this. Parts are typically put together with other parts to make a useful assembly. Now, what do I mean by this? If we took that piston, that connecting rod, and that wrist pin, all by themselves are not very useful, but if we put them into this assembly, now all of a sudden we have something useful. We could then take this useful assembly, put it into a larger engine assembly, take that larger engine assembly, and put it into an even larger vehicle assembly, and now that vehicle, as an assembly of parts, is now useful to us. So again, parts are typically put together with other parts to make a useful assembly. All right, the last thing we need to understand, traditional dimensioning and tolerancing that we're all used to seeing and using does not guarantee your parts will fit and function at the assembly level, which is where your parts are really useful. Okay, so there's some glaring gaps in traditional dimensioning and tolerancing. Traditional dimensioning and tolerancing, like what you might see on this drawing here, it only gives individual part and individual part feature information. It does not tell you how this part fits at the assembly level. Traditional dimensioning and tolerancing doesn't tell you how this part functions at the assembly level. So there's some gaps in traditional dimensioning and tolerancing that we need to address. So with that, we need to ask ourselves, if traditional dimensioning and tolerancing has some gaps, how can we dimension and tolerance parts in a way which guarantees they will fit and function at that assembly level. How do we do this? By using GDNT. All right, so that's what we use GDNT for, but you're probably still asking yourself, <laughs> what is GDNT? Well, number one, it's a system, and it's a system of dimensioning and tolerancing mechanical parts. Number two, it's a system. And it's a system that's more powerful than that traditional dimensioning and tolerancing that we're all used to seeing and using on our drawings. How is it more powerful? Well, it's more powerful because it's a system which allows you to know with a 100% certainty, 100% certainty that your parts will fit and function at the assembly level. Number four, it's a system. So of course, with any system, we need to learn some vocabulary, understand some definitions, follow some rules, and then once we do those three things, we can then start to apply symbols, predefined symbols, to the face of our drawing to help start to convey our design intent for our parts and our part features. And these are some typical or common symbols that you'll see within the GDNT world right here. All right, the last note here. It's a system but it only works if everyone involved agrees to use the same system. What do I mean? Well, the design people, the engineering people, the manufacturing people, such as the machinists and the inspectors, they all have to agree to use the same system. If a sports uh, game happened, but the teams couldn't agree to the rules, you'd never have a successful game. All right, so it only works if everyone agrees to the same system. So where do we get this agreed upon system that we call GD&T? Well, we get it from the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME. They published this system as a standard, which you see right here. All right, so we get it from them. It's a standard. 
Uh, but you'll notice on this standard that you don't see the term GD&T anywhere. How, how come? Well, it turns out GD&T is actually a slang term for this official title, which is called ASME Y14.5 Dimensioning and Tolerancing. So this thing we've been hearing about called GD&T is really slang for this standard right here from the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. All right, let's now look at a practical example. I have this pretty simple assembly. I have a top part and I have a bottom part and I've got this hardware holding it all together. Now in this uh, assembly's assembled state, this is what it would look like. Now I want you to notice a few things in this assembled state. First thing, we've got this interface or mating surface right here. That flat surface is where those parts come together. I have another interface or mating surface right there where this top part sits against this ledge. And then I have a third interface or mating surface right there where this part also slides over and sits against that ledge. Another thing, if I was to take a slice of this assembly and look at a section view, it would look just like this. Now you'll notice in this section view, I've got a critical assembly feature. What I mean by that? This extruded boss must fit inside this bore. If it doesn't, these parts will not come together. They will not fit and function properly at the assembly level. So I've got this critical assembly feature and these interface or mating surfaces that we want to look at. So now let's look at the top part. This is some common views you might see on a drawing for this top part. I've got my top view and I have my side section view. You'll notice I do have some traditional dimensioning tolerancing here and here and as over here as well to denote the overall size. But when it comes to that critical assembly feature, I'm also adding GD&T. By adding GD&T to this critical assembly feature, I'm guaranteeing that feature will fit and function properly at the assembly level. Also, I'm identifying those interface or mating surfaces on my drawing as well. Now this isn't all of GD&T, but this is a really brief introduction to the symbols that you'd put on your drawing and what you'd apply to your critical assembly features. And you can see the fully detailed drawings if you look in the description below. All right, really quickly, let's look at the bottom part. Same thing here, guys. I've got that critical assembly feature, which is that bore. And because it's a critical assembly feature, I'm applying GD&T to it. Again, I'm also identifying those interface or mating surfaces on my drawing as well. All right, so now we know what GD&T is, kind of real briefly how it's used. What are the benefits of using GD&T or why should I use it? Well, number one, you can be 100% certain that your parts will fit and function properly at the assembly level. Number two, you're gonna save time and money because you're gonna reduce the number of design to manufacturing to test fit cycles that you have to perform because your parts are gonna fit and function properly the first time around. The last one, you actually convey your design intent to the machinists, the inspectors, as well as the future designers who inherit your drawings and your designs. So if the machinists, inspectors, or these future designers pick up your drawings, they can see your GD&T, and right away they'll understand the fitment and the function you want at the assembly level, and they can get rocking and rolling and start to do their work. All right, those are the three big benefits of GD&T. However, guys, number two, that's your big one. That's your selling point right there. You're gonna save time and money. All right, that's the benefits of GD&T. One more time, what is GD&T? GD&T, it's a system of dimensioning and tolerancing mechanical parts, which allows you to know with 100% certainty that your parts will fit and function at the assembly level where those parts are actually useful. And it's a system from the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. All right, everyone, that's straight to the point. Thank you for watching. A quick note of thanks to computer-aided technology and SOLIDWORKS. I approached them for a SOLIDWORKS license and they worked with me so I could obtain one. 
All of the models, drawing views, and graphics you see were all generated in SOLIDWORKS, which is my native CAD program, and I enjoy it a lot. So thank you to them, and thank you guys for watching.